from studies that I've read and books that I've looked at, I think a lot of it comes from team unity. So how can we, how can we create more team unity? How can we create more team bonding and bringing guys together? Uh, this brings me to a story from one of my indie ball games. Um, we had a pitcher, a pitcher and an outfielder who, you know, didn't always see the, see the things the same way, but uh, our pitcher was throwing whatever. It was a close game. Uh, he's throwing pretty well, a starter. And um, there, next thing you know, there's a line drive to left field. Our left fielder's coming in, and instead of diving, trying to lay out, slide, make the catch, he just lets the ball drop. There was a guy on second with two outs, and he scored. Needless to say, the pitcher was beyond livid. He was pissed. Um, luckily, he got out of the inning after that um, somehow, was able to focus and get to the task. Once they got in the dugout, the two, left fielder and the pitcher started going after it, and I thought we were going to have a fight. Like, I thought they were going to be fighting in the dugout. It's just like, mm -hmm. you know, I've seen it before, like players getting upset, you know, and it, it happens, but I thought they were going to be fighting. So they, they beefed, they got their, their qualms out, they were yelling at each other, cussing, doing whatever, no physical confrontation, luckily. Um, and then I look back, you know, the next inning or two later, and those two are freaking sitting on the dugout, chatting it up like nothing ever happened. So I thought that was really cool to see that they could air it out, you know, get air out their grievances. And then from there, you know, they could go back to um, a team mentality, working for one goal, whatever goal, uh, whatever that goal may be. So I don't know what, what you think about that, but what's your, what's your suggestion for bringing on some more team unity? Yeah, I, I know at the uh, amateur level, like you coaches are dealing with, it might not be as intense. It might not be as physical. Maybe it is physical. Um, but I understand that you're you're dealing with a very specific, you're dealing with a very unique uh, age group. And you got these hormones that, you know, they don't have much control over. They don't have much... Um, understanding of obviously they understand puberty and all that shit but they don't understand how it affects their performance they don't understand how it affects uh their relationships you know when they get pissed off really quick they want to explode and i'm not saying not to explode you can you can explode but you learn you have to learn how to explode and do it correctly so in terms of team unity and, and understanding who your players are be very clear with them and set your expectations. And this might piss a lot of coaches off, but it's okay to get pissed off. It's okay to show your emotions. There's there's a lot of coaches out there that tell you, you know, not to show emotions or not to air it out with a teammate, mm -hmm. like Billy's example. This is a professional level, they're airing it out. Professional. But at the amateur level, for whatever reason, we sometimes get this idea like, oh, you can't be mad, you can't be frustrated, you can't get upset, you can't show it. Yeah, you can, but you gotta you gotta be able to bounce back from it quickly. Mm -hmm. So set the expectation with your team, like, okay, guys, like shit happens, and you communicated how you want. There's going to be things that are gonna piss us off, that are gonna frustrate us, but instead of letting it stick with you, in in his example, professional player, they got over it quickly, and that's the goal you want as a coach. That's the goal the players want is to get over it quickly. So letting them know, you know, we got to find these outlets. We have to figure these these things out of, of how to let it go, how to air it out. And and know that it's okay that, you know, I don't have to have my coach breathing down my neck because I got pissed off for a couple of seconds. Yeah, at least the player is emotional and it shows that they care. So they care about their performance. Hopefully they care about the team as well. Um, to create that good team unity, I think it starts with having a conversation at practice, beginning of the season. Um, you know, talking about your team goals, making everyone clear on what is our goal for the season. You know, is it to win a championship? Is it to develop players? Is it to create more team bonding? You know, what is our goal here? And then everyone can work towards that goal and everyone's on the same page. Um, and again, it's okay for players to get emotional, like Sam was saying. Um, and I would wait to address, you know, when guys are pissed off, I would wait till after the game or even better, practice the next day or the next practice. You know, we have to get better at coming together as a team, picking each other up, and not not providing distractions in the form of tantrums and throwing our shit, you know, as often. Because I watch a lot of MLB baseball, and those players get pissed off. They throw shit. They cuss. Um, just like our high school, college players. And but, even, but, but let me interject. Not every player is like that. Not every player is like that. Some guys do it because they think it's cool or they think, you know, they want the attention. Some guys just want the attention. 
you know, that, oh, oh, they want their teammates to feel bad for them and they want their coach to feel bad for them. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it's important for the coach to decide and to decipher, okay, this guy's doing it just for attention. And this is, this is where the art of you as a coach comes into play. This guy's doing it for attention. This guy actually needs mm -hmm. to do it to, to let go of that emotion. So I didn't mean to, to interrupt you, but I, I feel like that's a very, very important thing for you, for your players, for that age group. That's a very important thing to understand. Yeah, it's all good. It's tough to, and it, that's really tough to do, to decipher whether it's authentic or not. Um, but the more you get to know your players, the more you'll be able to, you know, to rely on your experience to figure out, you know, what's going on. Um, but also to pose questions, you know, and ask, what are your goals? You know, where do you see our team going? Um, what is your role on this team? So letting your players answer these questions um, and then finding out what type of team they are instead of forcing them into being a certain type of team. You know, some teams play better when they're relaxed. Some people, some teams play better when they're more, everyone's focused, you know, no one's dicking around in the dugout. But some teams really do play better when they're, when they're loose, more you know? Relaxed, yeah. And there's a difference obviously between, you know, fucking around and actually, you know, being focused and just staying loose. But as a coach, you can also tell what that is. But yeah, that's part of your job is being able to decipher what type of team you have and then building, um, building that idea into your players so then everyone can follow the same the same goals and stay on the same page so i think i think that basically covers it for that bringing in the team unity very important part of profession of any sport is team unity but especially baseball you know we got eight nine guys out there we need them all together on the same page and the coaching staff so until next time thank you very much